More than two years ago, the Federal Reserve adjourned from its October 2014 meeting and announced the end of its third round of quantitative easing for the economy. Remember that? It was a program known as QE3. QE3 had been running for over two years. Via QE3, the Federal Reserve purchased $85 billion in long-term bonds monthly, which included a hefty amount of mortgage-backed securities, MBSs. In buying mortgage-backed securities, the Fed boosted aggregate demand, which in turn caused the prices to rise on the mortgage-backed securities. And when that happened, the mortgage rates fell. Remember that? It was a pretty exciting time and it was pretty scary when it ended. The start of QE3 heralded an era of unprecedented low rates and sparked a refinance boom nationwide. HARP loans surged as homeowners flocked to the various streamlined refinance programs. Home purchase activity increased as well. Today, largely because QE3, home values have recovered most or all of the value lost during the economic downturn, and they continue to make strong gains. Since QE3 ended in 2014, current mortgage rates have remained below historical norms. In December 2016, the Fed said it will continue to support low mortgage rates via reinvestment. The committee is reinvesting principal payments from its holdings of mortgage-backed securities, and it anticipates doing so until normalization of the level of the federal funds rate is well underway. This policy should help maintain accommodative financial conditions. The Fed will continue to buy mortgage-backed securities, which will help us to keep mortgage rates curved for government-backed loan types, including conventional loans, FHA, VA, and USDA loans. Lenders are now offering 30-year fixed VA and FHA mortgages in the high threes to 4%. Conventional loans are only marginally higher. These rates remain half of the historical average near 8%. Now, we're minding your own business. Do you have a brilliant website? Your website must attract attention and give value to those who visit it. It should be a tool to retain and keep in touch with existing customers as well as for enticing new customers who want to check you out. The online world can be very scary to many small business owners, such as real estate agents, but if you don't embrace it, you're going to find yourself struggling to grow your client base. The development of an amazing website should be built with SEO from the ground up and geared to position your business at the top of the search engines. SEO search engines are changing every day, and so keeping on top of every algorithmic change is best left to the experts. The real estate industry faces a lot of competition, and to get to the top of page one and get found, it takes a lot of work. If you need any suggestions, feel free, give us a call. We'd be happy to refer you. Well, that's it for another edition of the Real Estate Insider Weekly. Thanks for watching. See you next week, and have a great day.